So now we have the Compendium of the Emerald Tablets, A Beginner's Guide by Billy Carson. Forward. All of us, no matter our background or who we are, reach a, a point in our lives when we start to see things around us a little different. When this happens, we naturally look for answers. This not only includes those from the awakened or new age communities, but from people of all walks of life who may have never considered our past, future, or why we are here and what makes us the individuals living on this big, beautiful blue planet. As you travel through the information from documentaries, books, lectures, and the vast amount of websites on the subject of your focus, whatever it may be, you will eventually find yourself stumbling, stumbling upon the Emerald Tablets of Thought. <laughs> the moment this happens, you will ask the same questions about the tablets as many so, as so many have asked before you, is this real? Where are they? How come I've never heard about them before? Who is Thoth? And so on. With that, your journey, that quest for knowledge will continue. One of the big issues today that we have with the Emerald Tablets of Thoth is the information. Or lack of it that is available for us to explore. There have been references and translations of it that go back many centuries, and it has been the centerpiece and foundation of alchemists and occult societies for its secrets to the creation of the Philosopher's Stone, the true alchemical magnum opus. So, if this is true, then why are there not volumes written about the Emerald Tablets of Thoth? Roger Bacon, Albertus Magnus, Michael Mayer, Aleister Crowley, and Isaac Newton all wrote about the tablets and did their own translations, all excellent work for the time, but today seems outdated by modern standards. Over the last few hundred years, academics who were unfamiliar with Hermeticism looked mainly at the direct words and didn't attempt to view and interpret the many layers and hidden meanings of the text. The pure scientific mindset instead tried to figure out the chemistry and perform the laboratory experimentation to confirm the secret of the prima materia and its transmutation. There is a lot of information scattered about who Thoth really was, what hermeticism is, alchemy and philosophy but to find the real stuff is all but impossible and it's true history meaning even harder putting it all together in one volume with a modern voice for our complex world has not existed until now today Billy Carson brings to our community the compendium of the Emerald Tablets finally we are able to dive deeper into the meaning of what Thoth really intended for us to know, to explore and discover what is truly important about ourselves and the world around us. There are three basic questions that we need answers. One, where did we come from? Two, why are we here? Three, where are we going? For the enlightened, these questions are basic but still unanswered and for those just beginning, their quest they are the biggest questions of all. This compendium of the Emerald Tablets will help both groups find the answers they seek. And finally, we all have a modern, fresh take on one of the greatest mysteries of our time, the Emerald Tablets of Thoth. Jimmy Church, host Fade to Black, September 2018. Preface. Goals of the Compendium of the Emerald Tablets, A Beginner's Guide.
The goal of this book is to provide you with a deep understanding of the profound and ancient knowledge that is your birthright. I will lead you on a journey that will delve into the history of the Emerald Tablets and the secret mysteries contained within these cryptic artifacts. As we begin, it is important for you to know that the Emerald Tablets were written by an ancient being known as Thoth, to Thoth the Atlantean. To date, there have been two manifestations of the Emerald Tablets. First, thousands of years ago, Thoth created multiple tablets of text and then concealed the location of these ancient tablets. Second, Thoth chose to incarnate as Hermes the Thrice Great. As Hermes, he carried a single Emerald Tablet. What to expect? In the first two chapters of this book, I will provide information so you can understand and validate for yourself the role of extraterrestrials in our history. I will also offer evidence as to how Thoth the Atlantean was influential in our development as humans. Chapters 3 through 17 contain the words of Thoth as translated by the American Dr. Michael Doriel. Doriel's translation often uses stanzas, a grouping of lines used in poetry. I have kept this format to make it easy for you to recognize when the words of Thoth begin and when they end. In each chapter I will add information and commentary to further express the meaning I find in the quotes from Thoth. Who studied the tablets and when? Seekers of wisdom and knowledge have studied the tablets in the Hermetic tradition up until 1925. Hermeticism is a tradition of study and spirituality based on the writings of Hermes. At that time, Thoth chose to appoint Michael Doriel, also known as Maurice, to locate and translate the original tablets. In this text, I use Michael Doriel's study of the tablets to establish a timeline for the teachings of Thoth. It is important to note that although my study of the Emerald Tablets will focus on the work translated from Dr. Doriel, I have taken the time to mention several under other individuals out of the many hundreds who have studied the Emerald Tablets. Their extensive research of the Emerald Tablets has dramatically influenced our history as human beings. In addition, I have referenced a significant number of topics, individuals, and modern day projects that continue to influence the study of the Tablets. Included throughout this entire book are links that provide additional information. These links are included to make it easier for you to do your own investigative research. I implore you to take notes and make an effort to follow through on your own individual study of the information. There are more materials and research possibilities than space allows for, space allows for in this book. I hope that as your guide, it can accelerate your awakening via the power of this information, and we can expand our consciousness together. The preface of Dr. Doriel's translation is a treasure chest of vital information enabling anyone to establish the mindset needed to understand the importance of the Emerald Tablets. Chapter 1 Validating the Study of Extra extraterrestrial life documenting the study of alien life first and foremost I would like to establish that I believe that the emerald tablets represent the writing of an alien entity named Thoth the written and physical evidence left on earth specifically where the emerald tablets are concerned supports that an alien force had purposely engaged with and powerfully influenced humankind to fully understand the implications that humans have interacted with an alien force throughout history we must first analyze the word alien just the sound of the word alien may incite suspicion speculation and even fear how could such a small word hold such power maybe because decades of negative overly dramatic programming from television and movies have depicted aliens as monsters these terrifying slimy and grotesque beings 
are shown to have arrived with the sole purpose of eradicating humans from the face of the earth. If this is your only understanding of the idea of aliens, then it would be perfectly natural for you to respond with fear. Our universe, our entire universe is dualistic. Just as there are good and bad members of our societies, there are good and bad aliens. I believe that good and evil permeates the universe just as there are light and dark and yin and yang, there are also good and bad. With that said, let's take a much closer look at the word alien. The number one definition of alien, according to the Merriam-Webster Dictionary, defines an alien as a creature that comes from somewhere other than the planet Earth. The definition then highlights the word extraterrestrial. Now let's look at the definition of the word extraterrestrial and see what the dictionary has to say. The Merriam-Webster dictionary defines extraterrestrial as originating, existing, or occurring outside of Earth or on its atmosphere. Once you look at history, and understand what it means to be an alien, you discover that life did not originate on planet Earth. Additionally, if we reverse the role and think of the word alien in, to be in relation to each specific planet, the word can become quite entertaining. For example, my thoughts on the word alien turn to humor when I realize earthlings that travel to the moon would be considered as aliens in relation to the moon. The Mars Project is on track to sending travelers to the red planet within our lifetime to which we will arrive as aliens to Mars. If we continue our travels and encounter other life forms, we will be the alien visitors. And I would like to think that to them, we will not be considered as grotesque monsters. Do aliens exist in our solar system, in our galaxy, or in the universe? Movies and television shows, as well as thousands of internet sites, wrestle with the idea that there is life other than humans, which can travel the cosmos. Historically, this was a far-fetched topic used only in discussions of the imagination. Today, the idea of aliens is no longer so implausible or unbelievable. Mainline religious groups and entire academic departments and major universities give serious thought to the subject of aliens and extraterrestrials, two words that I use interchangeably. How have those in authority within Western civilization approached the study of life beyond planet Earth? In most ancient of times, many great teachers and philosophers had no problem studying and hypothesizing about outer space. The arrival of the Christian church stymied beliefs regarding the study of the heavens and refused to consider the possibility that there was life outside the boundaries of mankind. By the times of the Renaissance and the Enlightenment, most mainline academics were afraid to reveal the full extent of their discoveries in science and philosophy. Today, the findings of astroastronomers, physicists, biologists, and archaeologists are more acceptable than at any time in the last five centuries. Almost 400 years after the Roman Inquisition jailed Galileo in 1633 for challenging the view that the earth was the center of the universe, the church is preparing to celebrate his life and scientific discoveries. The Church of the 21st Century has taken a more modern and academic approach regarding Galileo's findings, as well as supporting the belief that there is life beyond planet Earth. The scientific revolution came, became an inescapable force, irreproachable even by the power of the Church. Starting in 1757, the Church removed the ban on Galileo's scientific works Yet, it was not until 1984 that the venerable Pope John Paul II verbally admitted that Galileo suffered 
wrongful persecution for his beliefs regarding space and beyond using the phrase imprudently opposed. Galileo was not the only famous scientist during the Renaissance seeking to understand our link to the heavens. In the 15th century, Copernicus worked his entire life establishing the heliocentric nature of our solar system, proving that the sun is the center of our solar instead of Earth. He based the studies on long ignored documents from ancient Greece. During the course of his research, he became convinced that we were not alone in the universe. Copernicus' research finally reached publication while he laid on his deathbed and thus was left without reproach because it would have been unthinkable to harass a dying man in the same way as Galileo had been harassed. Catholic influence on our awareness of alien presence. In conferences held in 2009, 2011, and 2014, the Catholic Church supported the possibility of alien life. More recently, according to the Catholic Register of February 23rd, 2018, Pope Francis was quoted during the routine Mass saying, If an expedition of Martians arrives and some of them come to us and one of them says, Me, I want to be baptized. What would happen? Who are we to close the doors? The Vatican Observatory has been at the forefront of efforts to bridge the gap between religion and science. At the 2009 and 2011 conferences called by Pope Benedict XV, 32 scientists gathered to address the questions of life's origins and whether life exists elsewhere in the universe. Meeting at the world-renowned Vatican Observatory founded in 1582, an atmosphere of discovery, flexibility, and the possibility of being open to change could be found everywhere. Vatican Observatory scientists, clerics, have generated top-notch research, collecting one of the world's most significant collection of global and other earthly data. At the first conference in 2009, Reverend Jose Funes, director of the world-renowned Vatican Observatory, was able to present progressive results from the interdisciplinary group of astronomers, physicists, and biologists. Included among the many topics debated were life's origins and the existence of life in the universe, known as the field of astrobiology. He revealed, although astrobiology is an emerging field and still a developing subject, the questions of life's origins and of whether life exists elsewhere in the universe are very interesting and deserve serious consideration. These questions offer many philosophical and theological implications. For Funes, the challenge to philosophy and theology seem to be how to find consensus within the discourse. Reverend Funes expressed to the Vatican newspaper El Observatore Romano that one's faith in God cannot find compromise simply because one believes in the existence of extraterrestrial life. How can we rule out that life may have developed elsewhere just as there is a multitude of creatures on earth? There could be other beings, even intelligent ones created by God. This does not contradict our faith because we cannot put limits on God's creative freedom. The belief that we will eventually encounter alien life is strong among most secular and church scholars today. When that life presents itself to us, or when intelligent beings become aware to us, they will be considered part of God's creation. One of the invited scientists to the conference was Chris Empey, a, an astronomy professor at the University of Arizona. Empey believed it to be suitable for the Vatican to hold this kind of meeting. Both science and religion posit life as a special outcome of a vast and mostly inhospitable universe. There is rich middle ground for dialogue between the practitioners of astrobiology and those who seek to understand the meaning of our existence in a biological universe, and whether sentient life forms exist on other worlds. 
With much excitement, Impey added that if biology is not unique to the Earth, or life elsewhere differs biochemically from our version, or we ever make contact with an intelligent species in the vastness of space, the implications for our self-image will be profound. The vastness of our universe and beyond. Besides the hundreds of planets discovered, along, discovered outside our solar system by scientists, the European Space Agency recently announced the finding of 32 new planets. According to Professor Impey, we may discover alien life in measurable, measurable in years, not centuries. Planets that might sustain extraterrestrial life potentially number in the billions. In November 2013, astronomers interpreted data from the Kepler Space Mission suggesting that just within the Milky Way galaxy alone, our home galaxy, as many as 40 billion Earth-sized planets may be orbiting around sun-like dwarf stars. Against that incredible number, astronomers have discovered approximately 3,700 planets that exist in the habitable zone, the Goldilocks zone. The Goldilocks zone refers to those planets like Earth positioned just right from their suns for life to exist. The task of finding the planets that exist within the Goldilocks zone is daunting. It can be difficult to fathom that from, the, from that substantial number, life must exist. Many believe life even existed long before our scientific technology existed. One of those discovered the closest planet within the Goldilocks zone is Proxima Centauri, which is 4.4 light years from Earth which would take a mere 54,000 years using current propulsion technology. All other calculations of time travel find a basis in hypothetical systems yet not in existence. Perhaps life on Proxima B is calling humankind to make the trip. Perhaps extraterrestrial life has already made the journey to Earth. Since August 24th, 2016, we have known the address of this possibly inhabitable planet, which is RA 14 hours 29 minutes at 62 degrees longitude, 46 latitude. There exist 40 billion Earth-sized planets in one galaxy. Can you believe it? According to a news report from the Royal Astronomical Society posted January 16, 2017. The Astrophysical Journal reports that there are approximately 2 to 10 trillion galaxies in the universe, and within each galaxy there are 200 billion stars like our Sun. The obvious question left is just how many planets are there in the entire universe? Current speculation estimates 400. 80,000 million million million. Furthermore, with every new technological development in the field of astronomy and astrobiology, the data presents larger and larger numbers. You might ask, what do all these numbers mean? They are markers of authenticity. Our field, our study of the Emerald Tablets, necessitates that we have a clear and profound understanding of the massive size of our universe. Perhaps we would be safe to declare the number of planets in our universe are unknowable. The human mind may be too finite and limited to fully grasp the immensity of the secrets of our universe. The numbers of, of habitable planets are so unimaginable that there is room for every theory that has been proposed about time, space, and alien life to be validated as correct and true. There is room in the vastness of space for all of our theories to exist. Understanding the magnitude of the number of planets in our galaxy enables us to realize that the odds speak for the, ex for the existence of extraterrestrial life forms. Simply put, 
it would be more unimaginable to believe that there is no alien life elsewhere in the universe than to believe that Earth is the only inhabited planet. The vast numbers of planets in the universe give credence to our understanding of ancient alien races existing over tens of thousands of years. Religion and Science Many Christian denominations, as well as most of Catholicism, have come a long way with their strange bedfellows of science. Copernicus died before the church rejected his work, and another famous scientist did not fare so well. Giordano Bruno took the heliocentric theory a step further and wrote that our solar system is only one of many star systems where intelligent life exists. He also indicated that there existed extraterrestrial life superior to life on Earth. Unfortunately, the church decided that his blasphemy necessitated punishment and burned him at the stake in 1600. Today, most of the world's religious communities avidly honor the significance of Copernicus, Bruno, and Galileo. I hope they can rest in peace now that their ideas have found acceptance around the world. Clerics like Funes publicly accredit scientific concepts such as the Big Bang Theory as a rational explanation for the creation of the universe. The Big Bang Theory states that the universe began 13.8 billion years ago after the explosion of a single super dense point that made up all of matter. If he, if he were alive today, Galileo would stand in proud agreement with clerics like Funes. Aliens creationism or intelligent design. Despite amazing strides of change, our awareness to the possibilities of alien life forms, there is still some divisiveness on these matters within the Catholic Church and within other religions. Some still favor creationism or intelligent design, which makes it challenging for their supporters to accept the notion of alien life. In addition to focusing on the scientists of the Renaissance, the Vatican sponsored another conference on evolution to mark the 150th anniversary of Charles Darwin. The origin of species. Creationism and intelligent design theories took second billing so that attendees could focus on Darwin's main concepts of natural selection through evolution. Pope Benedict the 16th explored essential questions and worked with scientists to address areas of religious interest. His teachings, which were a crucial aspect of his papacy, reinforced the relationship between faith and reason. Though Benedict's papacy was notably supportive of traditional theology, the pontiff supported the, the study of extraterrestrial life. Benedict also ordered the Vatican Museums to open an exhibit on October 13, 2009 in preparation for celebrating the, the anniversary of Galileo's first celestial observations made in 1610. The president of the National Institute of Astrophysics in Italy, Tommaso Maccaro, stated that the exhibit's opening sent that stated at the exhibit's opening that since the 16th century modern astrology astronomy only informs us more about space and also contributes to an advanced realization of human consciousness. It was astronomical observations that let us understand that Earth and man doesn't have a privileged position or role in the universe, Makaro asserted. I asked myself what tools we will use in the next 400 years, and I asked what revolutions or of understanding they'll bring about. 
like resolving the mystery of our apparent cosmic solitude. Who believes? The Bible makes more than one reference to unearthly visitors. Do not forget to show hospitality to strangers, for by doing so, some people have shown hospitality to angels without knowing it. Hebrews 13, 12, 13 and 2. I propose that these angels are actually aliens. The Christian church is not the only religious group that has believed systems open to the existence of extraterrestrial life and otherworldly divinities. I want to stress that it is essential you understand this. Virtually every religion that exists on this planet involves deities or a deity that claims to be not of this world. What are the heavens, after all, if they are not planes of existence beyond this world? Let's take a quick look at some of the oldest and largest religions and their emphasis on otherworldly deities. The following numbers reflect the findings by the Pew Research Center. Christianity, 2.4 billion worship Jesus. And he said unto them, You are from beneath, I am from above. You are of this world, I am not of this world. That was John chapter 8, verse 23. Islam, 1.8 billion believe that the prophet Muhammad was meditating in a cave of Hira by himself when the angel Gabriel, not from earth, descended came down from above to him and told him to recite the words of God as a prophet Muhammad was illiterate at the time. Hinduism 1.15 billion Hindus believe that numerous spiritual beings and deities referred to as gods, goddesses, and divas populate the universe and actively interact with humans and influence humankind from outside the world. Buddhism, 521 million. Buddhists refer to a varied tradition of different gods and goddesses, not of this world, but though they do not worship any major deity, they are loyal to their own beliefs. Their beliefs feature praying and chanting to Lord Buddha, who provides the role of the enlightenment of the Modern translator of the Emerald Tablets, M. Michael Doriel, spent many months in Tibet studying under the Dalai Lama shortly after World War I. Mormons, 17 million. Angel Moroni, not from Earth, in Mormonism is an angel who visited Joseph on numerous occasions, Joseph Smith, beginning September 21st, 1823. According to Smith, the angel was the guardian of the golden plates that early Mormons believed were the source material for the Book of Mormon Smith had uncovered from a hillside near Smith's western New York home. Judaism, 14 million. The Old Testament holds many accounts of otherworldly visitors. The otherworldly strangers who visited Lot, the brother of Abraham, encouraged him to leave the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah, the prophet Elijah ascended into the heavens in a chariot of fire, spaceship with retro fuel blasts. Ezekiel fills pages of his prophecy describing in detail what many consider the blueprints for a spaceship's operation. There are many, many more such examples in modern day Judaism embraces the study of extraterrestrial life. Famous Armenian mystic and writer George Gurdjieff searched for the source of esoteric knowledge and stated that what he found will seem strange to many people when I say that this prehistoric Egypt was Christian many thousands of years before the birth of Christ. He also discovered and said, The Christian church, the Christian form of worship, was not invented, invented by the fathers of the church in a ready-made form from Egypt. Not only 
from the Egypt that we know, but from one that we do not know. This Egypt was in the same place as the other, but it existed much earlier. Only small bits of it survived in prehistorical times, and even these bits have been preserved in secret and so well that we do not even know where they have been preserved. Today, the study of extraterrestrials occupies the time of secular academ academians as well as the religious. That said, not everyone is on the same page as to how or what we should call otherworldly beings. In 2014, many secularists were vehemently against NASA sending $1.1 million of taxpayer money to the Center for Theological Inquiry, an ecumenical research institute in New Jersey, to study the societal implications of astrobiology and the idea of extraterrestrial life. Yet, for many aficionados of modern astrobiology and astroarchaeology, belief in aliens should be encouraged by those in and outside established religious institutions. By researching ancient documents such as the Emerald Tablets and studying mainstream developments in physics and astronomy, those who search for truth will find answers. For many, it is without question that those whom we call aliens today were gods and angels in ancient times. Carl Sagan once wrote in Cosmos, Meanwhile, elsewhere there are an infinite number of other universes, each with its own god, dreaming the cosmic dream. It is said that men may not be the dreams of the gods, but rather that the gods are the dreams of men. Carl Sagan noted in The Cosmic Question, Space exploration leads directly to religious and philosophical questions. Again, Carl Sagan attests that the origin of life on suitable planets seems built into the chemistry of the universe. Paul Davies explains in his book, Are We Alone? There are two principles supporting the evidence of the existence of alien life. First is the principle of abundance, stating that everything is possible will be realized. Second is the principle that as long as there are no obstacles to the formation of life, then life will exist. Vanderbilt professor of astronomy David Weintraub in Religious Religions and Extraterrestrial Life writes, We can quite reasonably expect that the number of known exoplanets will soon become, like the stars, almost uncountable. Evolution is serious business. Scientists in all fields of study approach the possibility of alien life with serious consideration and have spent years researching it. For 13 years, Maxim Makukov of the Fesenkov Astrophysical Institute and Vladimir Sherbach from the Al-Farabi Kazakh National University worked for the Human Genome Project, a project designed to map human DNA. What the scientists found led them to believe that an extraterrestrial civilization designed humans and had a goal to preserve a message in human DNA and to seed life on various planets. The researchers concluded that humans are the design of a higher power with a set of arith arithmetic patterns and ideographic symbolic language encoded into our DNA. Scientists went on to state that 97% of non-coding sequences in human DNA is genetic code from alien life forms. This finding was published in May of 2013 
in the journal Icarus, volume 224, in an article named The Wow Signal of the Terrestrial Genetic Code. Their research also states that, quote, a more advanced extraterrestrial civilization was engaged in creating new life and planting it on various planets. Earth is just one of them. According to Dr. Makukov and Dr. Sherbach, the sudden boom in evolution experienced on Earth billions of years ago is a sign of something happening on a higher level that we are not aware of and that mathematical code in DNA cannot explain evolution. Dr. Makukov said sooner or later we have to accept the fact that all life on Earth carries the genetic code of our extraterrestrial cousins and that evolution is not what we think it is. Case of Mistaken Identity I am in a music video called Anunnaki by Darnie Arcade that is featured on YouTube. In this video, you can see me using a wristwatch device to open a portal to the stars so that my crew and I can travel to Earth. In the video, we actually transport ourselves to Egypt. Imagine yourself as one of the Earthlings that just happened to be there in ancient Egypt when the portal opened, and then we, the aliens, came walking through the portal. From your perspective, you would assume that we were gods or angels from another dimension, or from the, quote, heavens. <laughs> 